All right, guys, Automated Garage back today with this beautiful 97 F-250 with the 7.3 in it. This is a one-owner truck, absolutely mint. We've done some work on it in the past. Called me the other day, he said, hey, man, I'm gonna need brake rotors on the front, and probably shoes on the back, and he absolutely chewed a rotor up. So what we're doing here, this does not have the non-serviceable bearing hub. This is old school races and bearings that you get to knock in and out. Uh, never done a video on this, so I thought I would show y'all doing that. Um, so anyways, first thing we gotta do, Let's get that tire pulled off and then we're gonna sit there and get the hub out, the locking hub out, and then we can get down to the nitty gritty of pulling this off and doing the bearings in it and swapping the rotors out. All right, so he has the super winch uh, manual locking hubs on this truck. And it's just as simple as pulling these little bolts out right here, which this is the thing that's gonna kind of differ from truck to truck. Are you running factory automatic hubs? Are you running some form of aftermarket hub? So we pulled all those bolts out. So let me get this off and I'll show you the next step. So you have this large locking ring to remove out of here. And what I do is take a pick and just get it started and kind of pry it down. Then you can get a small screwdriver and work it out over this lip and pull it all the way out. <clears throat> then you have this smaller clip that goes right here. I don't know if you can see it on that notch right there that holds the rest of the guts of your locking hub in right there. So pop that off. So then you can thread one of your bolts back into the body of this and pull it out like so putting your box apart and now we're down to the next locking ring right there need some snap ring pliers for that we're going to pop that one off so i just found this laying in the back here and what this is supposed to be round and not bent to fit right around the axle and it goes in this notch right up there at the top is where it's supposed to fit and go around there and i guess the idea is is that kind of locks it's another locking mechanism i guess to keep the nut from backing loose with the super winch like i said this is a little bit different than the factory setup so we're gonna have to see if we can get a new one of those so now we got our other snap ring removed on the inside there and there is a very thin washer that is keyed with the axle here splined with the axle and work that off It's been a while since I've done these old school ones. It makes you kind of appreciate the non-serviceable hub. I really think it's more heavy duty than this. It's definitely faster of a job to do. So now we're all the way down to removing our nut, our stop nut there on the back that you seat your bearings with. Uh, so we're gonna stop on that. We gotta pull our brake caliper off here. All right, you got a 13 16 top and bottom on your caliper bracket. Both of your actual caliper bolts that go through your sliders are half inch. So we got all those loose. Now we're gonna slide our caliper off, set it up here on the leaf spring and strap it down so it does not fall off. And then we can get back on pulling this rotor off. All right, caliper's all removed now. So now we can get back to removing this nut. It's a two and three quarter inch socket is what you need. This is more specific to 95 to 97 uh, previous years. And once again, this all kind of depends on your hub setup also. Uh, you may have the two locking nuts with the little splined washers that go in with the tabs that line up with each other. Uh, that's a whole different setup, but this is a two and three quarter here. So I'm gonna break this loose. This is not a impact socket, this style. So don't use an impact on this style of socket because you will quickly ruin it. So here is the axle nut here. You can see it's not really your normal hex shaped nut. It has the grooves cut into it. So now we can pull our rotor off. I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not. Probably not, it's probably not a good idea. All right, so this is where you wanna get a piece of cardboard because you're about to make a big greasy mess doing this whole job start to finish because this is old school, as I mentioned. So there's your outer bearing. So set that on a separate piece of cardboard so you can, when you have all your new bearings and races here, you can compare everything and make sure you're good to go on that. Um, now, the easiest thing to do that bearing's just gonna fall out. But you have a seal on the back, so you can't get the other bearing out till you get the seal out, but we're not going there yet. What we gotta do first is get these studs knocked out because you have to separate the bearing hub assembly from the rotor since we're replacing the rotors. So it's not complex. That's 
all there is to it. Now you don't want to just absolutely beat the dog crap out of this if you're going to reuse the studs. If you're not, then do whatever you want. But just make sure you hit them square. Don't hit them any harder than you have to and just separate them. separate that from the rotor this is going to be garbage set all your studs aside for now and now we can concentrate on getting this seal out and there you have it right there and if you cannot chew it up any more than you have to it gives you something to compare with because these are your trucks Came with various different axles in the front. So now we got to knock our races out and then we're going to clean all this up. And this is the part, especially where I was talking about <clears throat> having cardboard so you don't make any bigger mess than you have to. I'm going to knock the outer out first. And this is just a, a very large punch. And what I do is go in against the race. I lean it against the other side of the hub like this. And then you just start working your way around. There it is. There's your outer race. So what I was doing just, just then, this is sitting down in the hub and I'm just sitting on the edge of it, just like this. And this top portion is against the hub. That just gives you something stable to lean it against and drive it down and work your way around. Don't just stay in one spot, work it around just like when you drive the new one in. So I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna do our inner. What I should have already brought over here is some blocks to elevate that up. But what you can do is you can just set it back in your rotor. That'll get it up enough for you to get it out just like that. And there's your inner race. All right, so what you wanna do next, this is very important, is get you an empty bush light box. Just kidding, just get you something because you're about to get whatever you wipe this out with, nasty. So we're just gonna start getting the majority of all this caked up grease out of here. And then we're gonna start brake cleaning and getting the inside of this hub all nice and clean. We're putting our new races and our freshly packed new bearings in here. I just picked up every dirty thing I could kind of find that was already nasty. And then we'll use some clean ones at the end. So now one thing I should have added with this is you don't necessarily have to do your bearings. If your bearings are in good shape, you got a good seal, there's no problem with that. The customer just wanted us to go on and do this because we we're gonna have this off, have it in the floor, uh, already separated from the rotor to do all this. So he just said, let's go on to new bearings and seals while we're doing the rotors and new brakes on the front. So that's the reason we're doing this, but you can just knock out the studs like I did earlier. You can leave your bearings in there. I would recommend repacking them, grease them up a little bit more, at least while you have them out, put that back on the truck and be done with it. But this is just what he decided to do. And I think it's a good choice also, because he doesn't even remember when it was done last. So now we have this all cleaned up and it's very important that you have where your races go nice and clean. Make sure there's no trash in there because that could affect you seating <clears throat> the race in there properly. 
So let me get those and we'll drive them in real quick. All right, so we got both of our new races. This is our outer right here. And this is a, I don't know if I can read it anymore. I think this is like a 78 millimeter uh, seal and race driver. And you can see it just fits right inside. It's not actually sitting on the race portion that the bearing sits against. It's only sitting on that lip. So you want something like that because you don't want to damage your new race. So put it down in there. Make sure you got it square to start with. Get your seal driver and you just drive and you're going to hear the difference in the tone once it seats. All right, so now for our inner race. I do not have a seal driver that goes that big, so what I've always done, this is one of, this is a old race that I have. I don't know if you can tell. I've run it around on the grinder and made it where it's not a tight fit in here anymore. And you can use that to drive it in and uh, so you're not damaging your brand new race. See, that's not even fitting tight. That way you don't get this one stuck in there. Now, I got that drove down to where it's level with the top, so you don't want to be hitting your hammer on this. So now you use your punch to drive it the rest of the way. So now once you got both your races in, you just want to be able to double check and look around at the very bottom down there and make sure that it's seated all the way around with both of them. Make sure you don't feel like you don't have it seated all the way. The last fun and messy part is we're gonna pack these new bearings of grease. All right, so this is where you wanna clean up all your nasty mess because we're done with the nastiness. We've sprayed this out with brake clean, wiped it one more time so there's no trash in there. We got both of our new bearings sitting on a clean piece of cardboard and our new seal. We got our high temp uh, wheel bearing grease here. Just use a quality grease with this. And this is the really fun part and that I don't miss doing all the time. Just gonna put a wad in your hand. I'm just gonna take this bearing and the idea is you're gonna pack it down in the grooves front and back here. So you're just gonna kind of scoop it in your hand and you're trying to shove it down into that groove. And you're just gonna keep going around and get your blob right here out of the center. And you just keep going and packing the grease in there and do both sides, the front and back side, and just keep packing till you feel like there's no air gaps left in that grease. And you're gonna go through some grease doing it, at least doing it the right way. And that's how you pack your bearing. And then you got your hub sitting there ready. So as soon as you pack these bearings, you can go on and set them in their race. And of course the rear one, uh, the inner one, you put it in and then you drive your seal in and of course it won't fall out. The front one will fall out, so don't drop it on the floor with grease all on it because then you'll be having trash all on it. All right, we got both our bearings packed. There's our outer sitting on top of our wheel bearing lid so it's nice and clean. So now we can put our seal in the back and the open portion where the spring is, there's a little spring inside of here that keeps it tight. It goes inward, the other part goes outward. As you can see, I touched that seal with my dirty hands earlier. But you can use your race again to 
tap this in so that you're not beating directly on your new seal. You just want to go till it is flush with the hub. Now you can flip this over and then you can drop your outer bearing in. Just don't drop it on the floor. So now what I will do is take a nice clean paper towel and I'll stuff it down in here. That's gonna keep that bearing from falling out just because I'm done handling grease and packing bearing. You gotta flip this over just like that. I'm gonna get you a paper towel and some brake clean. You're gonna make sure the surface is clean that sits against the rotor so that it seats good. You're gonna take your rotor, set it on top just like that. You're gonna take all of your studs and drop them into place. You're gonna take your big punch and your hammer. You're gonna drive them home. I just initially go crisscross and get them set so I know everything is held together. And you can just kind of work your way around. And you'll hear the sound change if you noticed on that one when it's seated. So you're just going to drive it so your punch starts bouncing off of it. So I'm going to finish driving these and then this will be ready to go back on the truck. So now after you finish driving all those, what you want to make sure of is look at them real good and make sure that they're all seated against the rotor. So now this is ready to go back on the truck. We're going to clean our uh, axle nut up and have that ready to go on and then we'll go through the torque procedure put your rotor on and we still have our paper towel in here which is just going to get pushed out as i do this all right seated on there on the seal get your bearing seated all the way up in there so we got our nut all cleaned up here kind of fun to get started just make sure you don't cross thread it and get it started with your fingers not with the socket all right so what you want to do the book says 50 foot pounds while rotating the rotor and the hub back and forth this is seating the bearings that it's doing Do it two or three times because you're going to do just a little more every time. Now, what you do is you back off 90 degrees. What the book says next is you torque the nut to 16 inch pounds. What I like to personally do is torque it to feel and see what you have to do to not have any fair in play whatsoever. So I can, you might even be able to hear that. So if you want to go to 16, see if that gets all the in play out. If it doesn't, just keep adjusting it back and forth till you just have no in play. You don't want to seat the bearing too tight and you definitely don't want to seat it too loose either. 
So that bent up piece that I showed you earlier was the locking ring. It's gonna be hard to see. It goes in the groove at the top and it goes around that lip on the nut. You can see the end of it right there. So that's pretty important for keeping that nut from trying to ever back off. It's got little teeth that lock into the uh, inside threads of the nut and you make sure it's seated all the way in that groove. You can see the groove on the left side and you can see where the washer starts on this side. And what I do is just take a screwdriver and make sure it's seated all the way down in there, all the way. So now we're gonna take the grooved washer that goes back on. And then we're gonna take our snap ring pliers and put our snap ring back on. Make sure it's seated just like that. And we can take the body of our locking hub that goes back on. And we're going to take our other, I guess you'd still call this a snap ring, locking ring, whatever. That retains it on the outside. And this one's kind of fun to get on. You gotta hold your mouth just right. Make sure it's locked also. All right, and the last ring we have to put in is this outer one. Just like that, make sure it's all the way in its groove also. Now we're ready for our cap to go back on. We're gonna put these little bolts in and I'm not sure what Super Winch would say they want them torque to you. I'm sure you can look it up and find it, but all of these, what I always do is just snug them up because they will get stripped out easy. They will break easy. So just go to what feels right without overdoing it. And then we're gonna catch up on our brakes here in just a minute. We gotta push the caliper in and put our new pads and springs and clean our sliders and stuff. All right, so now we're gonna push our caliper back in. Always just use the old brake pad. Uh, make sure that you've allowed room for your fluid to get pushed back to the reservoir. There's enough room for it and that the cap is off. I use my ball joint press and before a bunch of Karens start getting all bent out of shape, saying, it doesn't take that much force. It doesn't take that much force. And I can actually sit here and turn this with my hand. It just makes it easier to go nice and steady with it. With this, and you're not going to be blowing any seals out on the pistons on the caliper here. I can turn it just real nice and slow with my ratchet effortlessly. And this is a lot easier than using a clamp. So I'm going to finish pushing this in. And then we're going to pull our sliders out, clean them up, grease them put them back in and then we can mount the bracket with our new brake pads and springs and then slide the caliper on and then we'll be good to go go take her for a spin with new bearings and new brakes and new rotors all right as far as these sliders go just give them a push Man, this side is pretty stiff get it out of one side of the boot and you can slide the boot off and pull it out So there's no grease on that. All right, we cleaned our sliders. We got grease on them now. And kind of the trick to this is getting it back in this boot without just pushing all the grease off that you're gonna put in it. And I took a screwdriver and I put just a little bit of grease in the boot also, because it's really hard to keep it from wiping all the grease off that you put on here. Now you can see with them all greased up, they slide so much easier so the caliper can float like it's supposed to so always check those and clean them always grease them no matter what all right now before we put our new pads on we've handled this rotor with our greasy hands we want to make sure that we don't have any more and get all over our brand new pad So we 
got our new Wagner semi-metallic says we already got our springs on and it's just as simple as popping your pad in there just like that also before somebody gets bent out of shape this was put on by the customer and it's not because the brake lines busted or leaking it's because he was worried about it coming in contact with this tire. There was a very minuscule rub mount spot on it. So that's why that's there. So I want somebody saying I should have replaced that brake line because there's nothing wrong with it. But that is not for a leak. All right, we're all together now. So I'm going to throw this tire on, torque the lug nuts to 150. And before I do that, I gotta put something that looks better than this over that. If you want something there, that's fine, but that looks pretty cheesy. And you can see it is a very, I mean, it's barely even rubbed the lines right there off of the rubber. I'm gonna put a piece of uh, black fuel hose around that that'll look better than that. That looks much better than that other bull crap that was on there. Brakes all done on the OBS. I ended up replacing the caliper on the uh, passenger side. I felt like it was dragging just a little bit. I had taken it for a drive and I was getting ready to video just like right now. I felt like it was pulling to the right. So here's no hands on the brakes. And I've already driven it once and I jacked it up. We have no drag or anything on the caliper, but that's what ended up eating that uh, inner pad up, causing it to wear so much more than the rest. So, brakes are good now with new wheel bearings, new seals. We also went on and did shoes and a hardware kit on the back also, which I probably should have videoed that for y'all, but trying to get some stuff done here in a hurry move on to the next one but a very nice clean OBS alright guys hope you enjoyed the video on doing some old school brakes on this really nice mint OBS uh, I'm on the list if he ever decides to get rid of this truck it will be here because I love this truck anyways old school brakes pack some bearings make sure you pack them good use quality grease use some quality brake pads uh, that's how you replace your rotor and do all that, that serviceable bearing stuff on the front of these trucks. Um, it's just a little bit different. Don't do that much of that kind of stuff anymore compared to the non-serviceable hubs on everything else. But it's pretty simple still. It's Automatic Garage signing out. Go check out all of our other content on the channel here. Check us out at AutomaticGarage.com. we got some merch on there also. We're on Facebook and Instagram. If this channel has helped you out or you want to help contribute to making more content like this on the channel, consider going to our Patreon and becoming a member of that. We got some exclusive content on there also, and we do a monthly giveaway every single month to tools, merch, stuff like that. Anyways, it's Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.